Hi everyone. Um, today we're talking to Christian Crosby, who's the national uh, member and volunteer manager, um, about some new training. But first, I'd just like to acknowledge that we're coming to you from the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I'd like to acknowledge any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander folks that are watching this video and acknowledge elders past, present and emerging. So welcome, Christine. Thanks for having a chat to us today. No problem. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you for having me. Okay. Um, so we're talking about the new training that's coming online really soon. Um, it's called Volunteering at Red Cross. And from what I'm hearing, it's a really important piece of training that everybody needs to do. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about the training module? Yeah, so volunteering at Red Cross is part of our um, our Speak Up Stand Up uh, activity that we're doing across Red Cross. Um, many of Red Cross staff will know about it um, already. We've all had to um, participate in the training that is really focused on uh, making sure that Red Cross people understand how they're safe at work. Um, and how we're, you know, sort of understand our obligations to ensure the safety of the people we work alongside or work with. Um, for our volunteers that are volunteering at Red Cross, what will happen um, if you're doing it online, um, a, an online sort of module, it's about a 20 minute to 25 minute um, learning experience, we'll call it, and it focuses on privacy and it focuses on work health and safety and it focuses on adult and child safety safeguarding. And what it will do is um, provide all our volunteers with a baseline understanding of sort of what their obligations are there, what information they need to know, and if they come across some of these issues, what they need to do to act on it. Wow, it sounds, it sounds like good training. So, so Christine, who needs to do the training and is it compulsory? Yeah, uh, every volunteer, um, well, actually, we will have a period of where all Red Cross people will have to do it. And so that um, staff have, have, have already been through met a, a, a different, uh, probably more extensive training, um, but um, every volunteer, and we will start officially sort of kicking it off from around the 1st of August to get every volunteer to do it. Currently, every new volunteer is doing it as part of their recruitment and onboarding experience. So um, every so if you've sort of met someone from the 10th of May who's a new volunteer, whether it's emergency services, retail or, um, or community programs or something along those lines, they would have done this uh, training. From the 1st of August, we'll be rolling it out to all those volunteers or current volunteers um, that have been around uh, for prior to the 10th of May. And, um, and uh, whether you've been here for uh, one, five, 10 years, we will get you to do it. What we actually do understand is that there are a lot of volunteers that actually know a lot of this information, um, but and uh, and hopefully hopefully when they're sort of learning, they um, they're validating what they already know, but they also can be really good mentors for um, some newer volunteers that sort of don't um, or haven't sort of been exposed to some of these sort of safety subjects before. Fantastic. So um, I've got the got the hard copy of the training right here. So I'd just like to understand a little bit more about what we're covering in the training. So I see we're talking about things like the fundamental principles, um, ethical frameworks. Um, tell us a little bit about safety at, at Red Cross and, and what's Speak Up all about, Christine? Speak Up is um, all about sort of us having the right information to be able to understand um, where where our responsibilities lie as a Red Cross person. And, and I suppose it actually will help in, ha, help in life and everything as well. So we've all got a responsibility to um, manage our, our own data and, and privacy and all those kind of things. But we also, when we're working with really vulnerable clients and communities and, um, and, and, and a, an example of this would be in an activation, people coming in and they're giving your, you your information um, and they are at their most vulnerable. It's just like, what are the right sort of tools we need to have in place? Or you have to understand that we have in place are the right actions that you do to manage that information or person, people's confidential information um, correctly. And from, um, and I suppose if you actually sort of see that not happening correctly, you also through Speak Up and through the Volunteering at Red Cross module, you know how to act on it and how to report it and all those kind of things. Or, um, or, and, and also sort of look at how things could, could be in place. And there's similar things around work health and safety that we do do, and there's adult and child safeguarding. So there's sort of personal physical safety, but there's people's information um, we have to, to look out for. And also um, in a 
for adult and kids safe safeguarding it's um yeah i mean emergency services you see people at your the, the most vulnerable you you will see children in an activation you will um through your pfa training sort of you will be be you will be looking and listening sort of for things and sort of areas to act on and so this child uh, kid, kids safe training and um adult safeguarding gives you the baseline um knowledge on how to act on that who to talk to if you do see some things um, that you know uh, are doing harm to others, and uh, and so you feel your your toolkit is sort of beginning to be full um, on how to do that, uh, on how to sort of act on sort of some of those areas and keeping people safe around you and keeping yourself safe. So hopefully I've answered that okay. Yeah, CC. And look, and for me as one of the state commanders, this is fantastic training, and it's it's it's. It's terrific to have a single point of truth that I can go to or any volunteer, whether they're in the incident management team or on the ground um, doing the great work in a relief centre or doing outreach. Yeah. There is one point that we can all come back to to report any kind of issue that we might be concerned about, whether it's physical, whether it's a child safety issue. Um, all of those things are, are covered um, by by uh, speak up um it's one link and we can all come back to the same place and it's just really important that we understand that and it's important that we report because something that we see um, we might not think too much about but um there might be there might be a really valuable piece of of information in a puzzle that, that other people can see yeah and i think it's also about giving you a bit more confidence in sort of some of these areas it's like some of them can be low risk medium risk high risk but it's giving you the confidence to be able to um to sort of understand sort of how you act um, or what and, and building that, um, I suppose, that library of knowledge that you've got around these subject matter areas. And one thing I sort of do recognise with um, there, that with areas such as emergency services or working in our aged care area, um, you are coming across people that are sort of, you know, they're at their most vulnerable and they need good advocates and good people around them that sort of understand sort of uh, and, and understand that that like they're like our volunteers are sort of have their toolkit full of sort of understanding how to act on these areas of safety. So yeah. Um, yeah. it's a real benefit, not only um, not only to the individual as a volunteer, but the person you're working alongside. And also it's um, Red Cross really works to sort of be a trusted organisation and and trusted people. And it's and it's um, and I suppose it's helping sort of build build all that as well. Yeah, it's really important that we can demonstrate um, to our partners and the people that we work with that we have all of our safety systems in, in place and, and really solid. So. How can our volunteers access this training? So um, at the moment, uh, for any volunteer, well, actually, I'll go back a little bit. We are officially kicking it off on the 1st of August. You will receive an email from Ross Pinney, um, our Red Cross president, and um, that will actually direct you to a little speak up or, um, or volunteering at Red Cross Hub online, and it'll give you all the different methods. At the moment, if you are interested in, in doing it, because you're more than welcome to it, it is on our learning gateway. And I know, um, the Victorian Emergency Services volunteers are all across that. So you're more than welcome to go and um, and um, find it volunteering at Red Cross, but it should be attached as a compulsory learning within your learning profile in the Learning Gateway. But over the coming weeks, so from about the 20th, uh, after the 20th of July, um, um, actually, sorry, the 26th of July, we will send an email out and we will link you through to a video if that's your preferred way of learning. We will have a list of um, teams, um, group teams meetings that you can join on throughout um, August and September. And you can go in and sort of, um, it's really, uh, uh, a, a, it's a facilitated session, but with a video um, that you can learn with other uh, volunteers from other programs as well. So a lot of, um, a lot of people do like going on teams and sort of having those cross pro cross program things. We also will have PDFs um, for you if you just want us to email it out to you. You read it, you let us know that you've done it, and um, you can also access a hard copy. Um, I think most emergency services volunteers are pretty comfortable with doing a lot of things online, so um, I. I can, I, I ask you to sort of go for it and see if you can do it through the learning gateway. But if you want to wait from the 26. Um, of July uh, for Ross Pinney's email, and we will um, we will also have all this in reds um, as well for you to to be able to access as well. But uh, for those that are eager beavers and ready to go and check it out, give it a go. Thanks. Go yeah. 
Dexter Skeen said a key date there is the 26th of July. We're going to keep an eye out for an email. We'll, we, yep. uh, we, we, we may well come back up on Facebook and do another video. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure that we really promote yep. that when that comes out. And there's yep. there's a, a variety of delivery methods for this training. So um, get into page up. That's the best and easiest way of doing it. But there'll also be sessions that you can come into. There'll be videos you can watch. There'll be things that you can read. Um, so there's a, a coordinated approach across a whole variety of different ways of, of doing this. And, and as we've said, every volunteer in the organisation is needs to do this training um, from op shops through to emergency services, through to patient transport. Everybody will be doing it. Uh, it's a really important piece of work that we need to um, to get involved in. And um, Christy, how long have we got to complete this training? Yeah, we've got around about three months to be able to do it. Uh, and we sort of also understand people go on holidays and all those kind of things. We um, we also recognise that um, things happen in people's lives. So we'll we'll give a bit of a space and all those kind of things. And um, look, we, and um, yeah, we, we will work with you to be able to do it uh, um, as you as you can. Um, we'll also have a follow up period. So if you do forget, don't worry, we will chase you up um, and, um, and sort of just give you a reminder and all those kind of things. Um, and uh, I, we are hoping that it doesn't put too much of a burden on our on our volunteers. We know that we love to throw some training at you. And um, but I, I have to admit, I have seen emergency services volunteers um, really get involved in sort of extra training, particularly around kids safe and safeguarding. So I can see that there is a, a hunger there for you. And um, one thing we do know, um, this is sort of this is some of this safety information. It's an ongoing learning experience as well. So. We will provide other options for you to do a deeper dive um, into some of these subjects as well. But yeah, but let's just focus on for now. I mean, if you can do it over the next, uh, well, if you can put it in your calendar to remind yourself to do it before September um, or uh, or by the end of September, that would be absolutely perfect. And then you won't sort of have us sort of like, oh, hi, how are you going? Um, would you like to, can you, oh, could you please finish this? So, but just put a note in for yourself and um, I hopefully you learn something through it as well, or um, hopefully from it, it's like you you can pass on some extra information that you already know to sort of some of your volunteer network around you. Thanks, Christine. That's a really comprehensive overview, and we're going to keep talking about this for the next month. So yeah. um, we'll be you, you'll see it come up on Reads. Um, we'll, we'll put it yeah. in all of our publications um, with links and all the latest information um, as we move through this this period. Um, and, yeah. and that's a really key point, um, Anthony. We will work with the programs how you like to communicate. Um, we have re recognised and got feedback. It's just like the the people that manage you or supervise you on a day to day basis. All the tools that you use, use to get the information for your program will be how you want to get that information. So yeah, Reds will be primary for our emergency services volunteers and working through the people that you work with every day, all those communications tools that you mostly engage with. So um, hopefully that works. And um, I'll just sort of do a bit of a spruik for um, uh, if you need a little bit more information um, through the my, the mobilize, uh, the volunteer hub or the mobilization, community mobilization team in Victoria, you can also email email us at vicvolunteer at redcross.org.au. So if you have any more information or you've just got a couple of questions about it, feel free to sort of run run that run that past you and uh, run that past us and we'll make sure they're answered or give you what you need as well. Thanks, Christine. We'll make sure as much information as we have available to us um, goes up with this post and yeah. um, and we'll keep people informed and I'm sure we'll keep across this and be talking to you again over the next three months. Thank yeah. you so much for your time. Thank you. And um, any feedback, welcome as well too. So, okay. Thanks, Anthony. Lovely to chat to you. Thank you. Catch you later, everyone. Bye.